We are back, our breaking news coverage on the budget, the budget coming down. Uh, and in order to pay for the spending initiatives, the government announcing an increase in capital gains tax for individuals as well as for businesses. The first capital gains tax increase that we have seen since 2001. Now, this also does allow the government to deliver on a promise to keep their budget within fiscal anchors that allow the deficits to be contained around $40 billion for the current fiscal year and for the next. We've got Mark McQueen on set with me uh, now, and we are uh, have also got some economic insight from Dominique Lapointe. He's global macro strategist at Manulife Investment Management. Obviously, the capital gains tax um, increase and the revenues generated from that have has been front and center for us here, Dominique. What jumped out to you? Well, same thing came a little bit of a, as a surprise. We were expecting some form of revenue to finance uh, the amount of spending that has been previously announced. But it, it does remain to be seen how this will impact business investment you know, in the budget. There are um, many exemptions that you can qualify for. So it remains to be seen. What does surprise me, though, is on is on the cost savings front, where uh, there, there appears to have been really no progress made. Uh, and they scaled back on their previous expectation to save 15 billion. Now they're, they're talking about about six billion on savings in their own bureaucracy, mainly through some attrition. So that's where I think uh, we're more skeptical about. Uh, and also, we don't have the same kind of economic outlook as optimistic as the finance minister has. Well, that was going to be my next question about the assumptions you're making on economic growth, because it looks like, I mean, even the Bank of Canada revised higher their, their growth outlook. Could economic growth be the upside? Side surprise here. Um, it could, but I could argue it could also be a downside surprise, right? Uh, a lot of that forecast and even a lot of that Bank of Canada forecast, even if that's not the topic here, are, are based on an economic rebound in terms of consumption and business investment in the second half of 2024. And that's where we get um, skeptical to deliver that we're going to need lower interest rates, and that remains to be seen when this will happen and at which pace. Uh, businesses are not very optimistic with regards to their investment this year. And also, there's a question of mortgage renewal that, in our opinion, will weigh more on the household consumption uh, than what the, the base case uh, forecast is. I want to bring in Mustafa Askari, he's chief economist with ISFD at UOttawa and former deputy parliamentary budget officer. Mustafa, um, the, the key ask from a lot of people um, in the financial world had been to at least end the uh, unending deficit. So on one hand, they are kind of keeping a promise within their fiscal anchors, but on the other hand, perhaps doing it at the expense of investment, which drives growth. Well, that's correct. I mean, this government, obviously, they, their, their plan is to provide social programs. It has been. And every budget has been like this. So what they have done is that they have especially spent all the economic room that they got, the fiscal room that they got from a slightly better economic situation, and also from the increase in taxes, and have spent all of that. Um, so... And again, we will look at the bottom line. The bottom line hasn't changed much since the fall economic statement. The deficit is essentially the same. The track is essentially the same. Debt is essentially the same, but nothing really shows that there should be, there will be any progress towards reducing the deficit and reducing the, the debt burden. So, and it is, it is not surprising. This is what this government has been doing since they, they got elected. They got elected on the, on the basis of raising the, the size of the state, and, and exactly that's what they are doing. Mustafa, one of the um, economic issues that many have wanted to see addressed is struggling productivity. Um, any answers to that in the budget, or is that sort of a tool that was, that was not really well executed on? Not in this budget, definitely. What they... Uh, they announced in the previous budget in 2023 on the on some of the tax credits for for green economy and green electricity and and those those are sort of they were they were targeted the target of those was to to increase uh, productivity and increase sort of reduce the, the the sort of reliance on 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 other countries with some of these these uh, 
uh, pr products and 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 but the, this this budget does not have anything on productivity really, and I, I think one could argue that some of the some of the measures that they have to 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 reduce the burden on on households and and those kind of things may have some impact on productivity, but there is no direct measure to to increase productivity and investment. Dominique, I'll give you the last word on that. Productivity is something that many economists have been calling for to see progress made. Mm -hmm. Are you disappointed we didn't see it featured in the budget? Well, we did see some initiatives uh, with regards to uh, inter uh, inter uh, artificial intelligence, for instance. But, but Mustafa is right. It's not the focus on, on, on this budget. But um, to be clear, increasing productivity is actually more about uh, um, removing rules and regulations and maybe letting businesses um, be in a, in, in a different investment environment. And to, 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 to do that, it's hard to do when you actually have to finance uh, that many billions of spending every time there's an update.